I want to hear about, um, first of all, what your role is and what the role of a weather observer is on Mount Washington. Of course. So my role up here as a weather observer is we go out every hour, pretty much on the hour, and we take weather observations 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So we are always up here. We are always going outside to observe what's going on uh, here on Mount Washington. The only thing that we will not go outside for is if there's lightning within the vicinity of the station, because obviously we don't want to get hit by lightning. But high winds, uh, hail, rain, snow, freezing rain, all of that, we are out in no matter what it is. Uh, you actually connected with us on a really good day because our peak wind gust today was 118 miles an hour. So that is the highest that I have seen while I've been working up here on the mountain. And despite those high gusts, we were still out there uh, collecting the data that we have to ensure that we have one of the longest running weather and climatological mountaintop data sets in North America. How long have you been doing this? Uh, so I actually started this spring. Um, so my first day was back in June. However, the observatory has been here. This is our 90th year. So we've been up here uh, since 1932, uh, doing the same thing that we do today. And that's going out every hour and taking those weather measurements to make sure that we have that longstanding data set. And what is life like? Do you, you live there and you're all like roommates? How does it work? Yep, so we are, because of where we're situated and obviously because of the weather that we get, uh, our work is a week on, week off shift. So we have two shifts up here that are a week at a time. We do our shift change every Wednesday. That being said, sometimes shift change will have to get pushed a little longer because we can't control the weather. So if we do get bad weather that comes in on Wednesday, we do have to stay up here a little bit longer. However, it's pretty nice uh, accommodation. So the little view that you have is actually our office area, what you're seeing right now. Um, below us, we have a full bunk room, so we can have up to 17 people here at a time if need be. However, our winter staff is typically only three. That being said, we also have a full living room and a full kitchen up here. We're fully stocked uh, as far as food and supplies go for three to six months. So we want to make sure we have enough stuff up here that Again, if weather was to get bad or something was to happen, we are okay being up here within the uh, observ uh, observatory for that amount of time. Well, and you have some company too, right? Uh, can you tell us about Nimbus and kind of this long line of cats at the observatory? I can actually do you one better because he has decided to come up into the office today. Nimbus! Uh, so he is up here with us today. Hi! Uh, Hey, buddy. He doesn't come up too often. He does <laughs> like once people leave and we don't do tours anymore, he does tend to spend more time with us up here in the weather office. Uh, but he is a long line of cats that have been up here uh, at the observatory. They started out primarily as a pest control option because we do have food up here and it is nice and warm. So it invites a lot of the summit rodents to come in, especially during the winter months to try and find someplace that's warm and fully stocked for them to spend the winter up here on the summit. Nimbus still does that role up here as a summit observation cat, but <laughs> he also provides uh, companionship for the observers up here, especially the night observer because there are two day observers, but there's only one night observer that's on. And since most of the mice or squirrels that you get are also more active at night. That means Nimbus is usually more active at night as well. So he is working the same night shift as our night observer is. All right, so let's talk conditions up there. When you go outside, yeah. you mentioned the wind today, which is crazy. What other extremes have you seen? Um, so as far as extremes go, a lot of it comes down to we get extreme cold. We don't really get extreme heat up here because we are on top of the mountain. So the warmest it's ever gotten in our recorded history is 71 degrees, which is a pretty mild day for most of us down off of the top. Uh, up here today, again, if you're looking at temperatures, our wind chill is at 27 below. <laughs> so quite, quite cold. Um, last shift, we did have it dipping down into the 30s and 40s below. Uh, because we we're, again, having very high sustained winds. A lot of time in the winter, we will see winds over 100 miles an hour, typically every three to four days. For 
a reference point, usually a category one hurricane starts at about 73 miles an hour. So most of the time in the winter, we are above hurricane force winds up here at the observatory. Sometimes you guys are also above the clouds, correct? Correct. Yeah. Sometimes we get really nice undercasts up here. Our peak uh, visibility that we can have from the summit is 130 miles. So we can see five states, two countries, and one ocean, if you do the math. So we can see Maine, New Hampshire. We can see through Vermont. Uh, we can see into New York. We can see parts of Massachusetts. Uh, obviously, we can see the United States because we're in it. And then we can see up over the border into Canada. And then looking to our south and east, we can see out to the Atlantic Ocean on a very nice day. So when we do get those undercasts, it's a bit like if you were ever to go out and fly and you're up above the clouds and you look out of the airplane window and you just kind of see that sea of clouds that extends out, that's the same view that we get here uh, on days like that. However, most of the time, 60% of the year, we are in the fog. Today is one of those days. And on days like that, you have a visibility of maybe 50 feet, so you can barely see anything. Hmm. So with conditions like that, is it ever dangerous when you go out to do the observations? Yes. Yeah. We have a very good safety record, but one of those things are we have to be very aware of what's going on in our surroundings. We have this uh, weather wall actually up in our office all the time. So before we go out, we can look and see what the winds are, what the weather conditions are, any changes in pressure that would indicate fronts coming through when we're about to go outside. Um, typically the winds here are out of the west and northwest, and so the way the building is designed is when we walk outside, the door faces the east. So we are protected going outside when we initially step out, and that lets us get our footing and kind of our bearing as well, depending on how much you can see. Additionally to that, we do have what we call an A-frame. You may have seen pictures of it. It's a giant red structure that's made out of uh, quarter-inch angle iron welded together. And that is to protect us when we step out of the building from any flying debris, since there are weather towers and radio towers and other buildings up here on the summit. With shifting winds, we can get the big rime ice accumulations that we have breaking off. And so they will fly across uh, the observation deck. And so when you step outside, you listen and you'll hear it uh, because there are other objects on the summit. You'll hear that metallic ting, kind of like if you were to hit the side of a pot or you'll hear heavy thuds as the ice hits the rock or other snow deposits. So if you hear that, you know that it's generally not safe to go beyond the A-frame and you kind of stay close to the building in order to minimize being hit from anything like that. As far as the high winds, we have surprisingly good footing after working up here for a long period of time. Uh, so it gets easier and easier to go out in those high winds. If they're sustained at a high speed, it's much easier to walk around in than if they're gusty. Because if they're gusty, you're going from a very high wind speed to a very low wind speed. And so once you get either adjusted to the low or high wind speed, it changes and it's very easy to lose your footing. So it's a lot of kind of paying attention to what you're doing, what your surroundings are like uh, in order to make sure that you stay safe while you're outside doing those ops. Hmm. Cool. Um, so <laughs> what's the purpose here? Where, where is all this information going? Who's using it? So this information actually goes to a lot of different places. Uh, we put out a higher summits forecast every day at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. So what that is for is anyone that's recreating in the White Mountains. The White Mountains of New Hampshire get a lot of people coming either hiking, biking in the summer times. Uh, in the winter, we get a, a lot of recreational ski people coming up here because it's one of the few places that has the pitch and terrain to do backcountry skiing. So we'll get backcountry skiers as well as winter hikers that come up in the winter. Um, and so putting that forecast out lets them kind of look and see, you know, what are the weather conditions going to be tomorrow if I want to go? Or they show up in the morning. What are the weather conditions forecasted to be while I'm at the trailhead? In addition to that, they can pull up uh, our higher summits forecast or conditions here. And so they can see those in real time and they can see what the weather is going to be if they're standing at the trailhead and they're wondering what it's going to be like at the top. Because up here on the summit, it can be drastically different um, down below. We are in alpine zone, so there are no trees up here uh, as wind breaks. Once you get above the tree line, it can get a lot colder and a lot quit, uh, windier. In addition to the weather coming through, 
because of the elevation, the weather can change quite rapidly. So it's very easy if you're not paying attention and not prepared to get caught in winter storms throughout the year. We've had snow every month of the year. Uh, so it's not strange for us to have winter-like conditions into June, July, or starting end of August into September. We also take the data and we do submit it to the National Weather Service. While we are a nonprofit member supported, um, we do provide that information to the National Weather Service and it helps with their climatological models as well as aviation reports that go out. So you can look up the Mount Washington weather uh, as a METAR report and it goes for local aviation. So pilots that are flying in the area since we do have two airports nearby, know what the weather conditions are gonna be like taking off if they're heading towards the mountains or if it's better to stay away from the mountains on any given day. We do have climatological records as well that go back to when we started in 1932. So kind of mentioned earlier, but it's one of the longest running weather and climate records in North America from a manned weather station, uh, which is cool. In addition to being the highest wind speed ever recorded by man uh, on the planet back in 1934. And what was it? It was 231 miles an hour. Oh, wow. So compared to today, a bit gustier uh, than what we're experiencing. And today it's quite hard to walk around outside.